okay so now we are on the chapter 10 of bhagavad gita and so krishna is talking more about um, so krishna started with uh, talking about how arjuna should act right how he should purify his action how he should be acting he should be acting from the place of equanimity should be acting for the sacrifices and all these kind of teaching and then he moved into uh, the path of knowledge right so in the sense uh, arjuna should uh, start meditating start you know uh, getting this knowledge of what exactly he is and his uh, nature of reality and this nature of reality and now in the last couple of chapter krishna is moving you know, towards uh, explaining arjuna what exactly he is what does he mean when by him you know what does he mean by his different manifestation and all these things so he's trying to explain to arjuna like what exactly he really is right and he mentioned different things he is like i am the source of everything uh, i am the splendor of splendid you know he pointed out in a many different ways what what exactly i am and how i am detached to the action and everything and he further goes on in the same line and he goes more and more subtle in the sense of what exactly he is and he explains uh different aspects of his of uh, uh his being or if uh, different aspects of his manifestation right so now krishna is telling arjuna that uh, and and at this point krishna is also preluding arjuna towards uh, this path of devotion as well right he is telling arjuna you can worship me using uh, you should do everything as a offering to me you should worship me Uh, you should devote to me and the way of devoting to me is like with the pure heart and right intention even if you give me a you know a leaf or a water i accept it delightfully right so that's the way he is uh, telling arjuna to devote uh, krishna basically so now he is telling uh, he who knows me the birthless and the beginningless right the birthless and the beginningless no starting uh, no birth right he amongst the mortal is undiluted so he's telling the he's bringing out another properties of himself is like there is no beginning and there is no birth to me in the sense of uh, the inside the depth of yourself your true self has no beginning and no birth and then he further goes on he has already talked about this uh, uh, that all these different uh, properties of nature originates from me right which is the fabric of everything tamas rajas and sattva he he explains the same thing in a different ways he says uh, intellect knowledge freedom from the delusion patience truth self restraint tranquility pleasure pain birth death fear fearlessness uh, non violence impartiality contentment austerity charity fame the manifold conditioning of uh, beings arises from me right so he's basically saying all these different qualities in people right patience austerity charity all these kind of fame all these different uh, qualities or properties are not just coming are just not there by itself right they're coming from somewhere and the source they are coming from is basically me they originates from me in that sense okay and then he further goes on and he he has kind of uh, said the same things before but now he is uh, kind of repeating it as well as uh, telling it from the little bit different angle that's all so those who think of me who absorb their life in me uh, those who constantly steady fast those who worship me with the love out of compassion to them dwelling in their heart i give them the knowledge of the yoga of discrimination which can destroy the darkness born out of ignorance with the shining lamp of knowledge right so he's basically saying the people who constantly think about me think about their source think about from where they are coming off uh, whose lives are completely absorbed in me who are steady fast in their practices and those who worship me with the love right uh, the different ways they are engaged in me engaged in their own deeper self those kind of person the fruit of these kind of actions are basically Uh, the discrimination or the knowledge that can destroy the ignorance right so these are the different action which bear this kind of a fruit and um, that's what he's basically telling if you completely devote if you uh, inquire about me devote to me uh, 
steady fast in your practice and all these things um, you will have a knowledge that can you know uh, destroy your darkness or destroy your ignorance it's not a faith that you need to have you can have enough experience you can have the experience where you can see what exactly you are and then that process it can be your ignorance can be destroyed now i'm going to ask a different question i'm going to ask an interesting question so you are the supreme brahma supreme abode the supreme purifier eternal divine spirit the primal god and born and all pervading and everything and this is what i have heard from different saints and sages and now you are also telling me right so it, and i believe you to be true here yeah. so i believe you to be true even though i have no experience but i believe what you are saying is true neither the god nor the demons blessed one knows your manifestation please dis- please describe without the reserve of your divine self manifestation by which you pervade this worlds right and abide in them and how may i know you right how constantly meditate oh constantly meditating on you and what are the various aspect of you that i can think of right like how should i be think the krishna told like these are the different ways you know somebody can have uh, destroy somebody can destroy their ignorance arjun is asking like give me more detail basically right how what how should i uh, in which aspect i should think of you think about you right and how can i know you and all these uh, questions so now krishna is saying um, i shall explain it to you my different self manifestations uh those are the prominent ones so basically as already said things like i am the source of everything so ba- basically fundamentally he has said everything that is that you are saying is basically coming out of from me right as a source basically everything is coming out from me and now krishna is uh, pointing out some specific things like uh, uh, different ways to uh, to bring the attention to Uh, what exactly are the higher qualities that are you know um, part of my manifestation right and they they are just like he has already said these things before also i am the splendor of splendid you know um and uh, you know the aust- aust- you know the um, the splendor of splendid and um, the water in the ocean and all these things he have already described um what so there there was many thing he has said before he is just uh, elaborating that even further um in the ways in the bodies of water i am the ocean in the in the dis- dishonest i am the gambling in the splendors i am the splendid i am the victory effort goodness of the goods uh, knowledge of the knowers and a lot of these different varieties of how you can um worship me in a way how you can devote how you can think of me in different aspect but fundamentally he is everything that's what he has said many times and and in the end he says but what is this existence extensive knowledge of what is this extensive knowledge to you arjuna i support this entire universe constantly with a single fraction of myself right so well, he is basically saying what you are seeing every manifestation is coming out of a fraction from this source from this coming from where it is coming out and uh, i it does not completely even represent me it's just the fraction of me that is creating all these manifestation in reality i am much more you know uh, far more than what you are just seeing the manifestation you are seeing right they are just part of me and in the next chapter he further goes on and uh, and arjuna in this chapter arjuna is asking krishna that okay if i am capable of um, i have heard all these thing from you and if i am capable of uh, seeing your all these things that you have described if i am capable of seeing them please show me your true self right please give me the direct insight please let me see you um, if i am capable of seeing that right and on that request krishna uh, krishna says okay you cannot see it with the normal eyes but i can uh, give you the divine eyes and you can see it from there and then arjuna saw all the things uh, which is krishna was describing in terms of uh, 
your splendor is uh, you know uh, is more than thousands is <laughs> coming together uh, your uh, potential is too much you have thousands of eyes thousands of mouths and all these things and uh, he sees like everything is coming from you everything is sustained in you everything is being dissolved in you all these things that are happening are basically already um, you know in the future has happened and you are you are the air you are the fire you are the um, sustainer and then he becomes extremely devoted to him he's like wow you are basically everything so uh, my salutation to you from all the angles and uh, if i have ever made a, any disrespectful comment to you uh, please forgive me all these kind of things and that way the that way it is more like a climax in the sense of uh, uh, arjuna first krishna has described all these things to arjuna and ultimately arjuna was able to see them arjuna was able to you know uh, realize directly um, with his own experience the everything that krishna was telling him a little bit mystical here but um, that's what the pa- that's but it it is a good representation of in the terms of how this whole process plays out right and ultimately he is saying um, this is very interesting in the end what he is saying Uh, not through the study of vedas not through the austerity not through the uh, charity and not through the sacrifices can i be seen in the form that you have seen me but by undistracted devotion alone can i be known and be truly seen in this form and to be entered right so he's saying like he has prescribed different methods before right uh, the method of knowledge the method method of action act for the sacrifice act for the um, the different austerities and all these different thing that he has described before he's saying um, you you cannot know me in the highest form of course there will be a uh, deeper realization but this highest form that you cannot know with all these different uh, ways but only by undistracted devotion this is again like a prelude to the next chapter which is the yoga of devotion he is saying by undistracted devotion only uh, you can know me and see in this form and even enter into it so he is basically saying like devotion is even higher than all these different practices uh, which he has prescribed very interesting so yeah that is the chapter 10 and 11 the next chapter is uh, about the devotion and we'll do it tomorrow